Hey, yo, the rain was steady pouring, heard the drops and drizzle meant to be. Shelling in my crib, no doubt. Peep the scenery. Telephone rang, then it stopped before I could answer it. I heard a knock at the door, so I answered it. And with Jermaine, he had a little situation. Beef up on the block, and off the doctor led the confrontation. He said these cats be acting hard on the block. And they be pumping, waiting, holding, so the Wayne got shot. Now, see, the Wayne was just a knucklehead. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another video here in my garage as you can see again we're here with the uh, Supra hope you guys enjoyed the last video if you guys haven't seen it yet I'll put a link in the uh, at the end of the video so you guys can click on that and go back and watch the last video we showed out had some fun with the two-step kind of blew some stuff up some of this stuff kind of held together two-step wasn't as strong as we thought it was gonna be so we're gonna hopefully have the tuner step it up a little bit so we can hopefully break some stuff see if he can maybe get a little bit more oomph out of it and see if it'll blow some stuff up. But today, we're gonna do something a little different. Since we're back in the garage, I've been kind of watching the videos as far as the views and things go, and it seems like you guys are more infatuated with the kind of how-tos, like how to make your car like mine, and the views seem to be a lot, like I said, a lot higher on those ones. So, today, what I thought I would do, because I've already done one video on the intake manifold, I thought I'd do a video on the turbo manifold. Now, like I said in all my other videos, this is a 7M GE. It's since been gone through. I've had all the machine work done. It's got forged bottom end, Wiseco pistons, Eagle H beam rods, Kometic metal head gasket, ARP head studs. So it's been it's been gone through. You guys can see uh, the coil packs. A little some things are different here. So if you guys are interested in seeing the intake manifold video, that's a couple videos. I'll um, before this one, so I'll put that in there if you guys want to watch that, or just go back through my videos and find that one. It's pretty good. A lot of you guys gave me some good feedback on that. And a lot of you guys have said that you are trying to replicate this, so that's awesome. That's That was the whole plan of that video that I did with that intake manifold. I wanted to share with you guys what I did to make that work as far as a forward-facing intake manifold on these motors. So I'm glad to see that you guys are using my knowledge, using my my trial and error to put these intake manifolds on, on your car. So I've had a couple of you guys reach out and actually send me some pictures. They look awesome. You guys are killing it, doing a good job. So hopefully you guys can get your cars up and running and yeah. I have not even once thought about putting the factory intake manifold back on. This thing's super responsive and it just works for my setup. So, enough about that. We are going to talk about the turbo manifold today. For you that have just bought this car, you guys have had this car for a while, whatever it may be, you're slowly trying to upgrade it, you guys will know that the intake manifold is kind of an issue. You guys are probably familiar with that and you're like, yep, it gets right in the way of the turbo. I can't put a big turbo on it. I can't do that stuff because the intake manifold running up over the top of the motor gets right in the way of the turbo. So I'll show you exactly what I did. Here on my setup, you guys can see I went with kind of a, a log style manifold. So they call this a log just because it's just straight, basic. It just comes right off the side. There's not much beauty to it. It's just simple. So I know that I am restricted a little bit on horsepower with this type of manifold, but it does spin up the turbo exactly how I want. There's not a crazy ton of lag and it, it, it works. It works for this motor. So what I did here was if you guys are gonna to try to build one yourself, this is a 7MGE GTE turbo manifold flange, exhaust flange, okay? So it's all the same. It doesn't matter whether it's a GTE or GE, they all bolt right on, they're all the same. Now I plan on doing a different turbo manifold in the near future, being a equal length, I guess, equal length header type manifold, a, a bottom, bottom feed manifold. So basically all the ones you've seen where they all come up and feed up underneath the turbo so the turbo can rest on top of the manifold. That's my plan for the future once I get my welder up and going, but for right now this works great. So the problem you're gonna see here, first of all, I'm missing this. For those of you guys that have the G GE, you have a gigantic distributor that sits here that feeds all the spark plugs and it gets in the way of everything. So that thing sits like right here, right in the way of literally everything. You can't get to any of this stuff here because it's just it's in the way. If you have the GTE, you do have a cam position sensor that's not as, as big as the distributor, it's a little bit smaller. As you guys can see, as I've gone to the coilover plug setup with the standalone ECU, all that stuff is gone. And there's a freeze plug in there now, so that's non-existent. I don't have to worry about that anymore. And look at how much room. Like I can, there's tons of room in here for activities and nothing is in the way of getting to the turbo. So you guys can see that sits in there nice. Now for reverence, I'm glad I kind of kept this valve cover here. You can see that is where the factory intake manifold throttle body would sit, is right in that little groove. That's why those the uh, valve covers have those little cutouts in them, because that thing sits right there. And that's right in direct line of the turbocharger. So you're gonna have an issue with intercooler piping or any of that stuff, unless you do some weird setup where it kind of comes around and, and down through here, or you do some 
weird thing. But now you can understand why my turbo is pushed back as far as it is. The uh, reason I did this was to try to clear this intake manifold, the uh, throttle body. And if I push this back a little bit, I was able to get the intercooler piping to come through here. And it fit okay, but there's just a ton of heat and things here. So it worked and it was fine for the time being. But now you can see how far back I'm pushed. I'm really tied up against the firewall, which is going to be a potential issue. Obviously I could get some back pressure stuff going on here and it's not ideal. That's why I want to change my manifold setup eventually. But for right now, this works great. If you're interested, I bought all the items minus the flange from Treadstone Performance. So those of you that follow me on Instagram, I kind of tag them in a lot of stuff. They're awesome. So if you guys are looking for some fabrication stuff, check them out, treadstoneperformance.com. I'll put a uh, link in the description below. That's where I got all the weld L's. That's what they call those. So I got obviously the 290s and then the four T's. And that's how I put the whole log manifold together. And then it's TIG welded. So you can see it's pretty basic. Like I said, 190, 190, one, two, three, four T's. They all kind of link together. And then we just weld them all together, weld them to the flange and called it good. Now, the reason I decided to do this was one, because it's super easy, but two, I have a ton of room underneath to get to the oil filter and all this stuff here, intercooler piping, all that stuff. It's, it's freed up a ton of space. If you do a bottom feed manifold, you're going to run into some issues here. You're going to run into some stuff here and also in here to try to get to your coolant feed or your water feed, whatever to cool the turbo. If you're running a water cool turbo, you're going to run into some issues with the manifolds. It's already pretty tight. You guys can see, I mean, I'm banked up against, this is all still really hot, but it's banked up pretty tight against the flange there. So I am running a T3 flange. So that kind of freed up a little bit of room as well. This is a T3 GTX 3582R and it spins up just fine on this manifold with no issues. Now I have been doing kind of a little bit of research. I was thinking about buying a 2JZ manifold, a turbo manifold chopping the flange off of it because obviously this isn't a 2JZ, it's a 7M. And I was going to try to line up all the runners up to the 7M utilizing someone else's work to try to just adapt it to my motor. I don't think that's going to work. 2JZ, it's like three, there's a space and then three. So you're one through three cylinders and then there's a big space in the middle of your four, five, six. So it's probably not going to work. I've got to find something that I can maybe adapt to or build an entirely new manifold, which could be a lot of work. And I'm not quite up to par with the TIG welder yet. So that could be quite the learning curve for me. I'm all about trying it, but as of right now, not ideal. Like I said, with the bottom feed manifolds, I have heard of people having issues with getting their oil return lines. You can't quite see it. Mine's right here. So it, it's perfect. It comes right out of the bottom of the turbo. I don't have anything obstructing the path of the line. So I don't have any weird uh, dips in the line or anything where I'm going to have maybe some potential oil backup. Also with the coolant feed, if you guys haven't seen my other video, I do kind of like a, a install on this turbo you guys can see there's one feed line and then there's the other so it just has to basically pass water through the turbo if you have anything in the way here like the distributor cps whatever or the turbo is too far forward you could potentially run some issues here this thing still sticks out quite a bit there's some different things you can do with this whole setup here the thermostat housing that will allow you to keep it pretty clean in here maybe a little more low profile and kind of move some of that stuff around but you can see this log manifold fits perfect on my setup i do have a 38 millimeter wastegate it's a tile 38 millimeter I'm going to have issues. I know some of you guys have actually said, oh, what about boost creep? It's on the back of my mind. I'm aware of that. I'm prepared for it. So if I do decide to keep this manifold, I'm going to change this, this up right here. Whether I put the man or put the uh, wastegate up top and then run dual side by side, maybe that's kind of an option. The reason it is set up the way it is. Now it'd be ideal to have the wastegate more right in the middle, right over number three. So you're getting kind of the same fee between one, two, three and four, five, six, all going through the wastegate. The reason I did this was because of the intake manifold. I haven't changed anything since I went to the forward facing intake manifold. That's why that is so tucked far back there. So you can see it's on the back of number six, which is not ideal because you have all this pressure right here. That's not going to quite make it here because number six is going to be utilizing most of the wastegate and all this other stuff's going to have to fight for it, but it works. So if you guys are still keeping the stock over the motor intake manifold, you are not quite ready to go to this. This is an option for you to push the wastegate all the way back. I've had it set up like this for a long time. It seems to work just fine. I don't. I haven't had any weird tuning issues. I haven't had boost creep yet. We're only about 11 pounds of boost right now, and it seems to be holding just fine. Now, of course, I'd like to do some cool setup eventually. 
like I said, either put dual wastegates next to each other, one on top, one on bottom, whatever it may be. It is a straight dump, so when I hit the 11 pounds of boost, it just dumps right out the, uh, what do you ever call it, the blast pipe or just the dump tube that comes out of the wastegate. It's just pointing straight down. It runs parallel to the uh, downpipe there, and I haven't had any issues with that as well. So it'll be easy to accommodate another wastegate, but we'll deal with that in the future if we need to. So again, like I said, it's not ideal you can see how far back the turbo kind of actually sits but if you're not sure and you want to leave all this stuff the same this setup has worked great for me i've actually run a bigger turbo before with this setup and i was able to actually clear around this so with the throttle body here i was able to do like a 90 degree actually a 45 degree rubber coupler and then i was able to run the intercooler piping down through here with no issues it was banked right up against the turbo but it did fit if you guys are wanting to copy kind of the same setup here there's a couple things you're going to need to know so obviously the wastegate thing here if you're running a non waste non internal wastegated turbo like this one right here you're going to have to have a wastegate so you're gonna to have to think about that whether you put it here or if you've gotten rid of this and you're forward facing intake manifold putting it right next to the turbo here but there is a couple little tricks so dipstick the tube that goes inside the motor is you can actually swivel that it's not ideal it's more of kind of like a push into the block, but I did have to bend the dipstick itself to kind of come out and around the turbo. I took the dipstick tube and I kind of just swiveled it down. It's got like a weird little bend in it for the GE, for the GT it's different. For the GE, it's got like a little 45 in it. I just twisted that down. I just rotated it around and then I put a little bend in the dipstick itself and now it just comes up and around the turbine housing. And like I mentioned before, this is a T3 turbo manifold. If you try to put a T4 flange on there, it might not work because the T4 flange is, is quite a bit bigger. But the T3 fit on there, it kind of just notched it out. We put the T3 flange in there, put a couple little pieces of metal on either side to fill up the gap, welded it, and then I put the, I got the stud kit from Treadstone Performance, the T3 stud kit, whatever it comes with, like a flange, gasket, and the studs and the nuts. Came with that old kit. I can't remember how much it was. I'll, I'll try to find it, put a link in the description. Pretty good kit, I've been using it for a while. It's been through like its third turbo and none of the stuff is stripped and it's it's holding together just fine. So no problems there. So like I said, if you guys are looking for some good fabrication pieces, Treadstone Performance is the way to go. They've got some pretty good stuff on their website, so check them out. But that's pretty much it, guys. It's super basic. And if you're like, I'm not sure, I know you guys can buy different turbo manifolds that are like this, like a log style manifold. I know like HKS has like an old school one that you can get. You can use the GTE manifold on a GE. They will line up. The only problem with a GTE manifold is you're running a CT26 that is not a T3 flange. So if you're like, oh, I'm gonna buy a T3 turbo and put it right onto the GTE flange, you're gonna run into issues. The CT26 uses more of a square flange, whereas the T3 is more of like a rectangle. So just keep that in mind if you wanna do that, or if you wanna just run a straight CT26 turbo on your GE, you could throw the stock manifold on there with the stock CT26, but you'll be limited on some power. But it is an option if you're like, I will gotta have this thing turbocharged, it will work. And it also will work with the intake manifold because they're kind of similar setups. The GT has a little bit different tube on the top here and the GE, the throttle body is more kind of on the end here where the throttle body is on this side for the GTE. So I'll put some pictures in there so you guys can understand the difference between the two. If you guys have worked on this motor enough, you'll understand kind of how it works, but it's pretty straightforward. So. I don't really have a whole lot to go off of here. I just thought I'd do this video because a lot of you guys have been asking what kind of turbo manifold I'm running. And there it is, a basic T3 built in the garage and it's been holding up for years and it's been delivering the amount of boost and spooling the turbo up as much as I had expected it to with zero lag. Well, I shouldn't say zero lag with a little bit of lag, but nothing super crazy that you get from like a huge turbo or anything like that. So it does spin it up just fine. And the tuner says that it, everything looked great. He just couldn't push any more boost because we were having issues with the intake manifold and the boost leak. So got that fixed. So we're going to send it back into him and he will get it squared away. But if you like the simplicity, it doesn't look too bad. Now, a lot of you guys have also asked me about the turbo inlet pipe. It's just a four inch 45 aluminum that comes through here with the K&N filter. Sits perfect in there. Now that I don't have a distributor here, you can pretty much fit whatever type tubing you want in there. Also, the downpipe is a full three inch downpipe turbo back. There's no, uh, no cats. There's a flex tube down there to kind of round around the firewall. You guys can see how tight that is there. So for future references, if I do decide to just make another one of these, I will push the turbo forward a couple inches 
and get this more of a smooth radius out just so I don't have any back pressure issues here. So I'm aware of that, guys. I know some of you guys have, oh, well, it's pretty tight right there. I know, but we'll fix it. And again, unlike most turbo manifolds, your turbo kind of sits either on the top or on the bottom. This is coming right off the side. I'll see if I can find a, a good picture of it so you guys can understand what's happening here. But the turbo is literally coming off the side of the manifold, and I just had to rotate the center housing to get the oil feed and then the drain to line up where they need to be. And then I was able to move the compressor housing, turbine housing, obviously is stuck where it's at because it's coming off the side. But I was able to move the compressor housing to line up where it needs to be, like right here. So I've got it kind of, it's kind of banked up kind of close to this right here. Not super crazy, there's still a little bit of room between the manifold and the compressor housing. But you guys can see it's just a 45 degree coupler to my intercooler piping and then it just kind of wraps around to the intercooler underneath there with no issues. I apologize guys, I know this isn't like a super exciting video, I just figured I would do this video because it's easier to just get this out there than to message each person back that's been asking about the turbo manifold. Especially if you guys are like, oh, you know, we wanna put a bigger turbo on our car, or whatever it may be, what manifold are you using? There you go, it's a custom turbo manifold and it, it's working great. I would uh, I would build another one in a heartbeat because it's, it's super simple and it works. But with that being said guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe it'll give you guys some ideas, like the intake manifold. You're just like, oh, okay, turbo manifold, I, I can do that. That's not, that's, that's not that difficult, I can, I can build out my garage. It's pretty straight cut, easy, easy to weld, whatever. You probably could MIG weld it and not have any issues. We have MIG welded a few turbo manifolds and they were fine. TIG welding's obviously way better for a turbo manifold. But yeah, you do you. And if it works, awesome, perfect, at least you'll know. As always, you guys know, I'm kind of like beating a dead horse at this point. I'm, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for you guys for checking out the videos, watching them, liking, commenting, that sort of thing. So continue to do that. It helps me out big time. And uh, hopefully we can get uh, moving on some other things here in the near future. And if you guys haven't subscribed and you guys came across this video, smash that subscribe button. Just do me a favor. You guys, you guys won't regret it. It's fine. It's whatever. And uh, throw a little like in there. You know, that's a little thumbs up when you click that. It just shows that you guys like the video. That'd be awesome. So with that being said, we will... See you guys on the next one.